Okay, so um, infertility is defined as the inability to conceive after 12 months of having sexual intercourse. That's with an average frequency two to three times per week without the use of any birth control measure or the other. Which means this couple must be living together for a period of a year and then they will be having sex for up to two to three times in a week. And then if after having sex for two to three times in a week, considering the fact that they didn't use any birth control method and they are not able to conceive, then we now say infertility as setting. Okay, and what are the types of infertility? We have the primary infertility, the couple who has never tested positive for pregnancy. And then the secondary infertility, woman who has previously been pregnant, regardless of the outcome and now is unable to conceive. What do you mean by regardless of the outcome? Probably she was pregnant and probably two, three months, the pregnancy came down. So we consider those ones as infertility. Or the person has had a child or two and is trying to conceive for another one, is not forthcoming, is also called infertility, which belongs to the secondary infertility. Are we together, please? Yes, sir, we're followed. All right, okay. So move to the next slide, conception and fertility. So the idea is to move from being, um, from a position of infertility to a position where you can say you are able to conceive and then you are fertile. So um, what are the main events for pregnancy to occur? It's most times implicated in the women and then they have to go through a process called ovulation. They have to go through fertilization and implantation. For the women that are here, ovulation is not a new thing to you. Fertilization is not a new thing. That's, um, fertilization is when the sperm from the man comes together with an egg or more than an egg in the, um, from the ovaries of the woman when they come together and then fuse to form a zygote. That zygote is the embryo, which is what we develop to form the baby or babies as it were. And then implantation, is it actually staying in the right place? If it doesn't stay in the right place, then we consider that as an ectopic, which in most cases would be advised to, to flush off. So that's, those are the conditions necessary for pregnancy to occur. Any condition that interfere with these three phases or these three events may result in infertility. So if there is no ovulation, if there is no fertilization, and if there is no implantation, then we say the um, couple is not fertile or there is infertility as it were. And what are the causes of infertility, whether the secondary or the primary? because we already classified infertility to be primary and secondary. Um, they are classified based on the male and female genders. And um, in, in our society, we believe that if a couple is not fertile, the, uh, we believe that it is usually the fault of the women, uh, thereby leaving the men behind. So in our... Uh, because of our lecture today, we should understand that it is not just the woman that should go for checks, but the male also, the male counterpart also should also go for check. Um, on the part of the male, the causes of infertility could be as a result of undescended testes, undescended testes, and this may lead to azospermia. Undescended testes is a phenomenon whereby the testes is not pitting or is not sitting where it's supposed to sit. And this is usually detected at early stage in life. So when you have your male child or you have a male relative and you observe that the testicles are the, when you observe that the testicles are lying on the same plane, then it is not descended. It is not descended. So the, the left 
testicle should descend while the right one should ascend. So it should not be at par. It should not be leveled. So when they are leveled, then there's a problem. That is when you now call for help and then um, you get help where necessary. So this can lead to azospermia, which is no sperm formation at all, or oligospermia, which in most cases is low sperm count. We have MOPS infection, which will destroy the precursors of uh, spermatozoa. Spermatozoa is formation of uh, sperm. So there are some factors, there are some, there are some, there are some steps that lead to the formation of of these sperm cells. And when there is MOPS infection, all these steps, they, you don't get to, you don't get to, um, those steps are, how will I put it now? We don't really see the effect of those steps, thereby making spermatogenesis, which is the formation of sperm, not to come to play. Um, some defect or sperm, dysfunction, which is sperm abnormality. You may have the number of sperm counts that is required to um, impregnate a woman, but when these sperms are not normal, the sperm has its own shape. It has a specific number that can impregnate, a specific number that you're supposed to produce for you to be sure that yes, you can impregnate a woman. When you have this number, and the, uh, the shape of the sperm is compromised, then uh, the, the, there will be infertility. We have low sperm count as also a cause, which may be as a result of infection, environmental factors, or some funny habits, some funny habits. Environmental factors like smoking, like uh, putting on of tight clothing, especially underwears, sitting for too long, especially the lorry drivers, the truck drivers that drive for hours and sit on their testicles. So the idea is for the testicles to be free and then um, allowing them to live in a, a conducive atmosphere, not, not heated up. And then the obstruction of the reproductive tract through injury or infection of the genital and then hormonal disorder, which is a male, which is usually the testosterone. Yeah, we have so many hormones, we call them the sex androgens that come to play when it comes to uh, fertility. So in male, when the testosterone level is very, 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 very low, then uh, we query infertility. For the female factor, Causes of infertility in females, we have the idiopathic, which is no known cause. Idiopathic means the cause is unknown. Ovulation failure or tubular blockage, which is as a result of a public inflammatory disease. Uh, example is the um, chlamydia infection or gonococca infection, which is called the gonorrhea. So any form of an infection that is left untreated can cause blockage of, of these tubes. This tube is where the sperm cells passes through to, in order to fertilize the egg. Remember we said for fertilization to occur, there must be ovulation, there must be fertilization, and then there must be implantation. So there is a release of egg, which is ovulation. However, the tube where the sperm cells are supposed to pass through for fertilization to occur is being impacted by an infection which is unattended, which has been left unattended to. This can lead to infertility. Um, coital failure. This occurs when couples do not have adequate intercourse. When couples do not have adequate time for intercourse, aka we call them the weekend couples. They don't see often, they only see maybe once in a week, thrice a month. And then when this happens, it's the, the duration of um, intercourse is not enough for them to um, eat that, um, the spot. 
we have immunological factors. Some women develop antibodies against the husband's sperm, which is something that can be treated too. Females having a male genetic makeup, we call them um, she male. They are females actually, but they have more of the male genetic makeup. We call them the clean filter. Some of us must have heard when they say clean filter syndrome. They are females, but they have male genetic makeup. So instead of them to have the double X chromosome, they have the double X and an extra Y chromosome. So those are the ones that um, they tend to have a deep voice like that of a man. They are, uh, their genitals are not well differentiated. So you could have some male features and female features. They are rare anyway. Uh, I want to make a point as regards ovulation failure. Yes, ovulation I'm, failure. I'm sorry to cut you, sir. Okay. Please, um, there's a comment in the chat box that you should please use the full uh, presentation slide presentation mode so that okay. yeah, people can see. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to make a comment on the ovulation failure. Um, some of us that have female children growing up, when they get to that age, when they start to um, menstruate, when they start to um, do the monthly uh, menstruation, we should observe them keenly and be ready to listen to whatever issue they have. Let's also not listen alone. Let us be able to educate these ones as they grow up because most of these infertility issues, some of them would have been detected while growing up. But if we don't take time to listen to them, it will affect them and uh, may not have a remedy, may not have a remedy, or the remedy might be costly when they advance in age. So when they come up with complaints, when they come up with questions, let's be quick to attend to them. And then where necessary, that we need to take them to the hospital, let's take them to the hospital so that all these things can be reversed and then they can live their normal life. Okay, um, move to the next slide. So this is a slide showing the female reproductive system, the, where the fallopian, tube is, the fallopian tubes are. It's a pair, pair of ovary, the endometrium, the myometrium, the vagina. So th that's, the vagina is more like a passage where the sperm passes through to hit the cervix and then the eggs are being released, the mate at the mammetron where the uh, fertilization takes place. And then on the on our right hand side, we have the sperm cells, the sperm cell. What we see for the men when we ejaculate is the semen, is the semen. The semen is like a liquid that houses the sperm. The sperm is not seen. You cannot see it physically. You cannot see it with our naked eyes except with the use of uh, a microscope. So when we ask people say, okay, bring your cement sample. We don't say bring your sperm sample because you don't even know if we we'll count sperm cells there or not. So you say bring your cement sample and it is the work of the hospital, the healthcare worker to now go ahead to check whether there are actually sperm cells there. Yes, there are sperm cells. Are these sperm cells, are they normal? Are they, do they have these features? As we are saying, the one with the head, the neck, the acrosomal region, the post acrosomal region, and the tail. Do they have head defects? Do they have mid piece defects? Do they have tail defects? Now, sperm cells that do not come this normal shape is not viable and is not able to fertilize an egg. They are just there, they will just be swimming around. Some of them may not even swim because the tail that is responsible for swimming might be coiled, it might be short, it might be impaired in a way. Then if it has a tail, if it has a very good tail, the, the head 
might have uh, a sort of defect. And when the head has a defect, it is the head that leads the sperm to where it's supposed to go. When the head has a defect, then you know that fertilization cannot take place. And then on the part of the female, if there's any um, compromise in the anatomy of the female reproductive system, then they may um, be problem with uh, conception. So what are the lifestyle modifications in order for us to um, be fertile, to conceive? The choice of lubricant. Sometimes women use lubricants and most of these lubricants have um, spermicidal effects. Spermicidal, I mean, um, effects that could cause sperm cells to die, even if the sperm cells are normal. When these sperm break open, from the semen, they try to find their way. And then when you use some of these lubricants, the lubricant kills the sperms and then you have not achieved anything. And one of the lifestyle modifications is to track your cycle, know your ovulation period, know your safe period, know your menstrual period as a woman. Maintaining a healthy weight when you are overweight, you tend to have too much of fat, which may impact in fertility. Then quit smoking. If you do smoke, you have to quit smoking. Most of these um, substances have a way to impact negatively on hormones or the hormones that are responsible for fertility. We call them the sex androgens. To quit drinking and alcohol. Limit caffeine. Practice stress management technique. Stress also can also lead to infertility. And then you prioritize quality sleep. Some people may ask, how many hours do I need to sleep in a day? At least for seven to eight hours. Sleep, deep sleep is fine. So. Considering all these lifestyle modifications, all these lifestyle changes, they are all good habits to adopt. And sometimes they are not enough to help you achieve pregnancy as a man or as a woman. These lifestyle modifications sometimes are not enough to help you achieve pregnancy. So if you follow all these steps and pregnancy is not still forthcoming, then you now go to see the doctor, the gynecologist who will assist you and take history and guide you on what more steps to take. Now, alongside lifestyle modifications, it is important to see the doctor who will take history and do physical examination to know the cause of infertility. And some of the investigations include the hormonal profile. The hormonal profile, like I said, the sex androgens, which consists of the prolactin, the testosterone, the estrogen, the follicle stimulating, the utilizing of all. all of these things are initiated by the brain. And then when there is a defect, there is a low value or high value which will affect fertility. One may not be able to conceive. In the case of women, so women that are uh, discharged, they have, let's say they have a Make this charge, make this charge, you are pregnant. In that case, when you most, in that case, when you do the test, the profile, you discover that the prolactin level is high. So the prolactin level they have is supposed to be found in pregnant with a pregnant women or breastfeeding mothers, but they have that value as those that are breastfeeding. So that is why you find a complaint like that. They say they bring out breast milk while they are pregnant or breastfeeding. So in that case, you say the person has due to probably stress, due to maybe excessive stimulation of the breast, which has initiated the brain to produce more of that protein. In that case, that patient, that woman, Ovulate. So when the result comes, you see an ovulation, an ovulation 
Hello, sir. Your voice is getting very low, sir. Okay. So, hello, am I audible now? A bit louder, thank you. Okay. Um, so I said in that case, when the result comes out, they say that, uh, there is an ovulation hyperprolactinemia. So that person has a high level of prolactin in the body and the person is not ovulating. So the cause of that person not being able to conceive is the fact that the prolactin level has increased, which is not supposed to be for a woman that is not pregnant or a woman that is not breastfeeding. Likewise, for some women, the ones that we call the she-male, they have high level of testosterone, which is supposed to be higher in males. So the women now have the higher level of testosterone like that. And then another test is the post test, which reveals the level of penetration during sexual intercourse and determines whether the sperm is deposited on the right spot in the cervix or not. There are other checks to check for fibroids, to check for endometriosis, blocked ovaries. When we have blocked ovaries, it means eggs are not released from the ovaries for fertilization to occur. Uh, we are going to check for infection also. And then for the male, the test we usually request for the male is the semen analysis and culture. And uh, sometimes we ask them to do the hormonal profile. The hormonal profile is the same thing as found in the female, it's just that when the testosterone is the one that is higher in males, then all of us are a bit lower than what we get in the females. So when you do the semen analysis, the semen analysis will now tell you whether there is um, the, the sperm cells that have been produced they have the normal morphology, which is the normal shape. It has a head, it has a neck, and it has a tail that is not coiled or that is not short. Okay, so if we have considered all of these things, they do a culture too, semen culture, because sometimes the, the, the semen might be infected. So when we rule out all of these things, then you can now say you can go ahead and have your sexual intercourse and then see what God will do. What are the other um, assisted reproductive uh, technology? We call them the ART, assisted reproductive technology. This includes fertility treatments that handles both eggs and sperms. So when you are querying infertility, you are not only telling the woman to go to the hospital, you are telling the man and the woman to go to the hospital for checks. As we have seen in this uh, assisted reproductive technology that it is not only the women that is um, affected. You know, if they want to assist, say um, they can't conceive, probably they've been married, the couple have been married for years and they've gone through all of these tests, all of these checks and everything is perfect, it is normal. Probably it is due to an unknown cause, which is idiop idiopathic as you mentioned. It could be that implantation cannot take place in that woman. So there is need for implantation to take place outside of the woman. And then when the embryo starts to grow, we now plant it back into the woman to carry that baby in form of pregnancy. So pregnancy as set in, but not in the woman. It was done outside. So that is uh, what we call assisted reproductive technology. It's expensive. And um, it has helped so many couples to break that genes of uh, infertility. And one of the methods is the in vitro fertilization, which is called the IVF. You hear people say, what is IVF, what is IVF? We've had cases where IVF has failed once, twice, and the third time it will work. And some patients will just try it once and it will work out. And um, the good thing about it is you might be lucky to have triplets, you might be lucky to have twins, quadruplets as it's where. So um, when the healthcare provider or the gynecologist advise that you should go for IVF is a form of assisted um, reproductive technology which is a plus to science and thank God for the wisdom given to 
people that were able to come up with such technology to assist people who are not able to conceive normally. So there is no difference between those people who had their eggs and sperm, who had their fertilization done internally. There's no difference between those that have had it done externally. The only difference is that one was done externally and was planted in, and the other one was done internally. No plantation was done. No, nothing was brought from outside. That's the only difference. The children, the offspring or the babies are as strong as those ones that were done internally too. And then the kind of schools they attend is the same school, the ones that are done internally too, we attend. So there is really no difference. If they don't tell you, you won't know that this one has actually done IVF. Okay, so I think that wraps up um, infertility. Now we move to birth control and family planning. Birth control and family planning. Now we've been able to um, conceive. We have about four children. They say children surround your table. You shall see your children, children. Now to define birth control and family planning, I will use some questions to define it for us and then we can come up with definitions on our own. Now, are we familiar with the term weather for two or weather that causes overpopulation? Have you considered how much it costs to give a child quality education, especially in Nigeria? What about the health of your wife who will carry the pregnancy? Have you also considered that? What does Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 mean to you? If you don't know, let me quickly do a purpose. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So if you consider all of these um, four questions, then you should be able to define birth control and family planning. You should be able to know why it is important to do family planning. Okay. Um, what are the questions to ask before choosing a birth control method? Now you want to you want to give a gap between your first child or your second child, or between your third child and your fourth child. There is need for you to go to your healthcare provider to say, okay, we still want to continue uh, what couples do. However, we don't want it to result into pregnancy, into pregnancy that is not wanted. Perhaps you want to give enough space. You don't want your children, you don't want them to say, oh, I'm only six months older than my sister, that kind of a thing. So what are the questions to ask for choosing a birth control method? Number one is, how well does this method prevent pregnancy? The second question to ask is what are the feelings about pregnant about getting pregnant? Would an unplanned pregnant unplanned pregnancy create chaos in the family? Or would do would a pregnancy would a pregnancy not well would a pregnancy be welcomed if it occurred earlier than planned? Are we going to welcome this pregnancy? Are we not going to say, no, this pregnancy is unwanted. Let's do something about it when the pregnancy comes. How much does a birth control method cost? What are the health risks of this particular method I'm choosing? Is your partner willing to accept and use a given method of birth control? So it's not... Um, something that the woman will just say, oh, I want to use this method. Oh, I'm going to the hospital to do family planning. It has to be the mutual consent of both parties, that's the husband and the wife. They must go together and then choose a method that is best for them. Do you want a method that can be used only when you want to have sex? Or do you want something that will be in place that will be working all through, even when you do not want to have sex. And what is the availability? Can this method be used without a prescription or without you going to the hospital? 
Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves before choosing a birth control method. And what are these methods of birth control? What are these family control methods? Number one, we have the condom, which prevents pregnancy and also STIs. Taking us back to the previous slide, we did say that the availability. So for condom, it is ready, readily available. You can use it without the doctor's prescription and you can get it at any um, pharmaceutical store or grocery store out there. What are the health risks? It really does not pose any health risk except that, uh, well, for those who um, have chosen condoms to be their own birth control methods, the healthcare provider would have told you the health risk involved. And it does not only prevent pregnancy, it also pro protects one from having sexually transmitted infections. I think that's the only birth control method that prevents STIs. The others, which diaphragm is a part of it, is a flexible rubber cap that is filled with spermicidal cream. And it is fixed over the cervix before intercourse. So this one can be used when you want to have sex. It can be used at all times. It is strictly for when you want to have sex. It is inserted through the vagina to meet the cervix. So that when, when the semen is trying to go through for the sperm cells to um, burst open so that fertilization can occur, this diaphragm is like a cap that will block the semen from entry. It does not only block the semen, it has um, a protective, it, it has a protective gel around it that kills any sperm that comes in contact with it. So this one does not prevent from STI only prevent pregnancy, that's the diaphragm. Then we have the hormonal methods. The hormonal methods prevent the ovaries from releasing eggs during the woman, the woman cycle. And they do this by affecting the level of hormones. We men made mention of those hormones, the sex androgens, the luteinizing hormone, the prolactin and the likes. So the birth control pills is an example of hormonal method. We have implants, you have the skin patch, you have the vagina ring, and you have the morning after contraceptive pills, and you have the interuterine device. All these hormonal methods, they're only there to prevent pregnancy. They do not protect from STIs. And most of these hormonal drugs, they are not, they are readily available, but it has to be with doc doctor's prescription. For the implants, you have to go to your healthcare provider to do the implant for you. And whenever you want to remove it, you have to go there for them to remove it for you. And like I said, it is not just the woman that will take that decision. It has to be a mutual consent of the husband and the wife before going to the healthcare facility to choose a method. And before they give you a method, they would have done a series of tests on you to know which is best for you. So the fact that you had an association meeting and then most of your friends in your, in your clique, they use the implants, does not mean that implant will work for you. The fact that they use birth control pills does not mean birth control pills will work for you. All these hormonal methods may not work for you. Yours might just be condom. So according to the test that is being carried out on you, is what we determine the kind of birth control method you will use as an individual. Uh, another birth control method, which is the permanent one, is the removal of vas deferens and the tubular ligation. The vas deferens is where the sperm is being stored. It's, I, I didn't really get the picture of that. I would have displayed it here to show you the vas deferens, the testicles, and then so when you remove the vas deferens, the person cannot even ejaculate, stop more producing any sperm. And then the tubular ligation, when you remove the ovaries, not producing eggs again. And this method, they are usually irreversible. So perhaps, God forbid, something happens and then you need to, ah, it's a more 
this may not happen again because you have permanently removed all of these things. Okay, in conclusion, infertility is a significant social and medical problem affecting couples worldwide. The female and male factors are responsible. We should not blame the females alone. We should not blame the males alone. So the male and the female should um, take a bold step to check themselves. And then before, um, before we now concentrate on which of the gender to treat. Um, the treatment also depends on the cause of infertilities and it varies from population, including drug to surgery to um, assisted reproductive technology. Some using of drugs may just be the way out. Some might undergo surgery, probably removal of fibroid, probably um, doing uh, removal of endometriosis, and then some uh, as we do assistance reproductive, assisted reproductive technology. Your choice of birth control method depends on a number of factors, including your health, how often you have sex, and when or not you want to have children. Most importantly, as you seek help medically, do not forget the place of God. Thank you very much. I hope I've been able to pass a message. Yes, uh, more than a message. Thank you very much, my senior colleague. So we just had uh, Damola Deogo, the medical lab scientist, and he just shared with us. So um, I want to give room for questions. But before questions, I don't know if um, uh, Mrs. Umayyan Shela, you want to make your contribution now or after the questions? No. Uh, good uh, evening. evening. I think you have to move away from and the devices around you. I think the other device is connected, so just move far away. Yeah. I want to say good evening to everyone. And uh, God bless us as we listen. I want to appreciate Brother Mola for a job well done. God bless you. And God bless each and every one of us. I have just little contribution I have. First, uh, concerning the infertility, you have really done well. You've trashed it well for us. And in your conclusion, like you have rightly said, we have the female factor and the male factor. Both are equally responsible. So people of God, I want to tell us today that uh, when we have challenges, especially in the issue of infertility, we don't need to put blame on either the man or the woman until it is otherwise proven that it is the woman that has a challenge or the man has a challenge. So this is just an eye opener for us today. When there is an issue or when we have a challenge, there is need for us to face it and there should be mutual understanding between couples so that the challenge will be easily dealt with. But when we now assume that it is my wife that has problem, or it is my husband that has problem, then it will be very difficult for us to tackle the challenge because that belief in us will prevent us from seeking help. And like we know in this part of the country, in the African world, our expectation is for us to have the fruit of the womb, especially after marriage. We see our mothers asking us, Bawuni, how far? They want to know, they are eager to know. So for us to come to a conclusion that there is actually infertility, like Brother Mola has rightly said, infertility will derive its definition from when a couple is having regular sexual intercourse 
for a period of 12 months and uh, they are unable to achieve pregnancy, then we regard that couple as being infertile. So for our young couples, especially the newly married couples, we need to get this right, that we should not be too anxious when we have not been able to achieve pregnancy, especially within the first 12 months of marriage. There's no cause for alarm. Let us calm down and pray and do the needful. Like Brother Amola has rightly said, he mentioned something about weekend husbands. This is not only weekend husbands. We have some that we call them away husbands. The husband will be living in Abuja while the wife is living in Lake. It is just once in a while when the husband comes around, they will be able to meet themselves sexually. That might not result in pregnancy, especially when the woman is not ovulating. Pregnancy can be achieved during the ovulation period. So if the woman is not ovulating and the man comes around at the time when the woman is not ovulating, then pregnancy cannot be achieved. But if the woman is lucky and the man too is lucky, the woman is ovulating and the man comes around, then pregnancy can be achieved. So let us consider all those factors. Are we, for, for infertile couples, are we having regular sexual intercourse? And when we say regular sexual intercourse, what do we mean by regular sexual intercourse? A man should be able to meet his wife, a married man should be able to meet his wife at least three times in a week. That is when we say it's regular. For couples that are trying to achieve pregnancy, the regular sexual intercourse is three times in a week. Anything out, outside three times in a week is not regular. I'm not uh, talking about those that have completed their family now. I'm not talking about those that need intervals between childbirth. But if you are really, you really want to achieve pregnancy, regular sexual intercourse should be three times, at least three times in a week. It can be more than three times. But the minimum is three times in a week. So I want us to put that into consideration. Then at times, some food, some type of food we eat might alter our hormonal system or our hormonal acid. So there are certain foods we need to, to eat when we are trying to achieve pregnancy. When we get to our healthcare providers, they will be able to expand more on that. Then we need to take care of ourselves. We have to be psychologically stable, emotionally stable, and physically stable before we can achieve pregnancy. Then concerning family planning, Brother Mola, I want to give you kudos. You have really tried. Um, elated. The, the little contribution I want to ask is that uh, I want to add is that you did not uh, help us to mention traditional methods of family planning and modern methods of family planning. You were able to trash the modern methods of family planning. But I don't want us to look away from the traditional methods of family planning. Because in the olden days, those were the methods our mothers were using. And it might work for them. I cannot really say because I was not around in the era of olden days. So I might not really say. But from what we, from history, what we learned or what we had was that there are some traditional methods of family planning like the bead the feathers, the seeds, and some other things like that. Now, if somebody wants to ask a question, they are going to ask that, how does it work? Does it really work for them? I want to believe that uh, our mothers in the house, probably they will be able to throw more light on that. On the modern family planning method, you have tried, but I want us to, to break it down a little. So that our people will be able to understand. Like we have the barrier method, which you have mentioned. We have the chemical method, which you have mentioned. And we have the hormonal method. The barrier method harbors the condom, the diaphragm, and some other barrier methods that they use. Why they call it barrier method is that it prevents sperm coming from the man to enter the woman, to enter the woman's uterus to go and fertilize the ovary. That is why it is a barrier method. 
And it is one of the best methods of family planning. Like you have said, it prevents some other SEIs. Then we have the chemical method, which you also mentioned, which is this spermicide. Spermicides are used along with the diaphragm, with barrier method. So that is that. Then for the hormonals, we have mentioned the hormonals, we have the implants, we have the OCPs, that is the oral contraceptive pills. We have the skin patch, like you have said. We have the injectables. And that is why you will see some women, they will say, All this comes under the hormonals. Then we have the permanent method of family planning. I can't remember if you really mentioned that to our men and our women. Usually it is women that fall victim of this uh, permanent method of family planning. After four, after five, they are going to be giving them option of doing a BTL, bilateral tuber ligation. This bilateral tuber ligation involves cutting the woman's tube in both ends and they are going to tie it up. When, when, when the, the tube is being cut, it means the bridge between that, that leads from the ovary to the uterus, which is the fallopian tube, has been broken. And when a bridge is being broken, there will be obstruction to the passage of the fertilized egg to the uterus. So there's a break in transmission. That is for women. For men, there's what we call vasectomy. And when you mention vas vasectomy to our men, they are like, you want to kill me? You want to make me less a man? What about the woman that is going for BTL? So please, let's encourage ourselves. What is good for the group is good for the ganda. So if we are encouraging our wives to do BTL, please let's encourage our husband to, to go for vasectomy so that both of them will be sterile, there will be sterility. And uh, the man will not uh, have a change of mind in the nearest future that I want to have one more, I want to have two more. Or oh, I'm looking for a baby boy, or I'm looking for a girl. And uh, there will now be controversy. So when we are doing the permanent method of family planning, please let us think very well. Let there be mutual understanding between both couples, especially when we have completed our family. If we have planned to have three or four, and we have completed those three or four children, then we can be encouraged to go for the permanent method of family planning. It is good for us to plan our family. A family well planned is a family well cared for, or a family well catered for. If we, if we fail to plan, then we are planning to fail. Like the question my brother raised that how much does it cost to raise a child, one child, especially in this, our economy now, in this Nigeria, how much are we buying a paint of garlic? How much are we buying a mudu of rice? How much are we paying for school fees? Especially those of us that our children are going to privacy, even the ones that are going to government school, bring, buy broom today, buy slippers tomorrow, buy uniform, buy this. Not, there's nothing that comes free. They might be telling us free education, free education, free education. It's a lie. We have to pay for something. If we don't pay for it, we will not get the right value of what we don't pay for. So let us sit down and try to plan our family well. And I pray that it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to rest here and give room for questions and other contributions from the house. Yeah, thank, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, man. This, that's our CMD. God bless you very much. So our time is fast spent. We are very sorry, but we would like to take two inputs from people. I can see two hands raised. So I saw the hands of um, Mr. Banjo Demi first. So Mr. Dem, um, Mr. Banjo Demi, you can um, unmute yourself and ask your, maybe your question, your contribution, then followed by Ms. Obadino. So we just take those two because of our time. Thank you very much. Mr. Banji, over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Mufaju Pelo wa won ele to ele rawa. Ibere mi ya koko o wa lori airomo bi. Eh, gbogbo e ko ti won ti ko wa 
one call I need to be a shelly. Bere no law of I want to ni a yig bow deal ni. So ma as or on your bag, Borara. Ni a yat the jaw, I want mamma one low ag bo. Lati, wow mo. So Lenny, she as soon leg bang when you're new morrow. It make you one low ag bo. That become lost out of your so bo. Lati, wow mo. I bury me a cocony. I bury me a cagey, oh, I need a balacagey to yat it best or any pa. Um, I don't know. See, let us see how much baby. Mother, baby, we play. I want your woman to come to you, baby. Oh, my son, Lara, oh, my darling, we know. She lost it on your own. Thank you. So I'm sure uh, we are noting our uh, 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 your questions have been noted. So let me just allow Ms. Obadino, then we'll answer the two together. So uh, Ms. Obadino, I do. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, my question evening, is, I have two questions, actually. My first question is on the lifestyle. The very first point that I saw that I saw the use of um, lubricant. I didn't really get that place because I know people mention of lubricants. I don't really know the perspective of where the lubricant is coming from and how it uh, and how it affects fertility. That is one. While the second question is on the um on the assisted reproductive what was that thing? Assisted reproductive technology or something? Hats. Um, the very first point there, there were two points raised there. The first one, um, I can't really pick. I think it's different from the second one, which is the IVF and it's confirmed to be the most effective. Now being the most effective, is it only the IVF that is, because many people try this IVF. I have a friend who has tried IVF like two times of which it has failed. Is it the only source? Or are there other, other technology assistants attached to the point one, which are not being mentioned? Those are my two questions. Thank you. Okay, so let's take those two questions. I can see Agape hands raised, but let's take into the letter. Let's take a, let me... Let's take that of um, uh, Miss Adeyemi first. So she mentioned two questions, if I can remember very well. The first one was that we, we talked about just um, if, um, controlling the, a lot of those that don't uh, are unable to. And the second one was on the local means of birth control, perhaps, and I think, one was two in one that I was talking about. Um, and your coordinator, your Rubanica Bami feed down. Sorry, I want to go in, but rather come on, only benefits. Thank you, sir. Okay, won't um, won't I like to repeat the question so that our coordinators can in English? You know, you said it in Yoruba, so I'm trying to increase it in English so that you also answer. So, over to you, uh, DA, sir. Okay, um, please let me push the um first question the agbo and then the one that has to do with that is already a missed question let me push it to cmd while i undo the second question okay for the second question that has to do with um using spermicidal cream that's lubricants i said to achieve conception you should be careful of the choice of lubricants that you use because most of these lubricants contain spermicidal creams. They are spermicidal creams. Spermicidal means they kill sperms. So if you want to conceive and you use most of these lubricants, they have the ability or the capacity to kill sperm cells, thereby... Oh. Please let's mute to 
thereby not making it possible for that for that couple to conceive. I hope that has answered the question. Therefore, the birth control method, the ART, the IVF is the recent technology, which is what everybody are now queuing up to get. Yes, we have other methods for the assisted reproductive technology. We have the test tube babies, but those ones, they have more failure rates than the IVF. IVF still at least have a success, more success rates than the test tube babies. If the person that has tried it twice and it failed, can still try the third time, then some other time can be having to employ someone to be a surrogate to carry the pregnancy for her. You know, it can also just sign a contract. It's it's not really easy. It's not it's not a decision that is very easy to make. But um, with proper counsel, you can always get a surrogate to carry the baby. Perhaps the problem is for the woman. Probably there are some things that is not making the embryo to stay in utero. So you can always employ someone to carry the baby for you. And then when the baby is there, they give you your baby and the mother of your baby. So the sperm was actually gotten from your husband. The egg was gotten from you. You only employed someone to carry the baby for nine months. So my son, Dima, over to you now. Thank you very much. So we are fine. Oh, there you mean? I thought I fully join the one with my mama. What the baba? What the one only? Pay a day. She to my ekoi. I want ekoi me wa. I want ro me wa lo yibo to show lo la ti to money you ba. I thought I fully join. Fun ibere ni ya fi ode yemi. Ibere ni pa agoli lo. Fun omo bibi fun lati se to wiwa omo tin ba ge ti question yin yen dada pe laye atijo awon ya gba won ma lo agbo a le so wipe ko sise at the same time a le so wipe o nsise sugbon iwa di so fun wa wipe awon agbo yen won olodi won a si mo awon kan ti won popo sinu awon agbo yen we have a complication. Here, I'm going to show you how to a shaman's disease. A shaman's disease, sinye. When the uterus, the world, the two walls of the uterus are collapsed together. Tima ba lepo. O mi pe ya poli o manye. Che mo wipo ya kaye wa ni nwe ni bitom mo madurosi. Shugmani ba tima to ba lepo in kankalonfa. Most people tima ni problem ni amani wipo ya tima lossi le alago ya tima mago 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 rishi rishi. I want to go near only fetty lori a boy, your money, a jackie, your money, co lepo. A later money, a man, I want to she chef. The boy, any batty moon, I go from your shimelo, I will be a domelo, or long she, to go where law or not a bamma, ni my bow and near you, latito. Nibati a batty, I'll read any logic we pay, I go moon, she share. Kama fi tori wi pe lagba ja lo sile alagbo emi na fe lo sile alagbo e je ka to awon oni segun yin bo wa lo lati wa ona bayo fun wa ibere yin keji o dale lori wi pe se ti aba bi gbogbo omo tan ninu se o ni ipalara fun wa tabi ko ni ipalara fun wa awon loyin bo n pe nkan kan ni meat we have meat and we have a fat nkan to loyin bo n pe ni fat ni nkan to je oto ta mo wi pe looto ti nkan bayi ba sele atubo ten ni nkan bayi nkan ti won pe ni meat ni awon kan ta ro wi pe o le sele ta ti condition mind wa wi pe ah won so wi pe omo gbodo jabo leyin ye to mo ba jabo leyin ye oko meje lo ma ni aboko meta lo ma ni they are just meat they are not fat won i se oto mo kan fe fi awon oro yen deruba wa wi pe ki iya to bi omo fun ra re ko ko samoju to omo yen ko ki esara ko ma je ki omo yen jabo tori to omo ba jabo leyin ye awon kan to ma to le sele si omo yen oju pe ko omo yen ni oko meje lo nigba to omo ba jabo leyin ye to ba fori gbale se mo pe e je le ro si omo yen lopolo a di pe to ba dojo waju o le mo se gangan gan tabi ko mo ni giri 
So ni ba tan ba ti so yen fun iya omo yen a ri wi pe o ye ko un moju to tori ko si ya to fe ko mo un ko fe oko meje tabi ko ni iya wo meje be gege ni awon kan si won so fun wa yi nigbati oluda ni leko wa nsoro won mu wa lo sinu we genesis ori kin ni ese 28 iwe yen so wi pe ka ma bi si ka ma re si ka ma gba yun lori ile ini tu mo gba yun se mo pe teyan ba se family planning ko le bi omo to po to ma ma gba yun lori ile awon eko ti awon ijo padi ti won di mo ni yen ti won fi ni gbagbo ninu fi pe to so mo bibi hello Can I continue? Yes, ma'am. We have to. I'm going. Okay. So I want to bag bag one in here. You bag two more bag bag. Then I have to go. Oh, 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 won ni problem on je o ba wa se ni problem on je ni sin to ra wo dako igba yen won ki nu omo lo lewe won ni problem mu wi pe ba wo ni ma se san wo lewe in fact nigbati won gbe eko fe de nigba ye awo lowo aso itan yen fun mi wi pe awon kan ku awon omo won pa mo sinu le ti won fe ki won lo lewe tori pe won gba gbo wi pe won fe gba awon omo yen lowo awon ni won ni je kan raye ba won sise loko bet ni sin awon melo la gba do wi pe ko mo wa lo sise loko aba wa melo la lo mo koko ko ta bo ko bi awa ta te wa lati lo ke gan ta won baba wa ni oko koko ati oko bi odun melo lati pada lo sile ta boju eyan lati lo wo so awon kan be yen ni awon kan ti won gbin si won ninu ngba yen wi pe ti won ba bi gbogbo omo tan lara o ma pa won lara o si nkan kan to pa yan lara ni be ta ba wa so pa ti e fe bi gbogbo omo to mi pa ma bi millions because god has deposited millions of eggs saro obinrin ati millions of farm si aro kunrin a je wi pe a le bi omo yen tan a le bi tan ko si ba se fe bi tan so oro o fege lasan ni so brother mo la ti answer question when how does lubricant cause its effects there are two ways ninu oro lubricant yen si sadi ola ibere yin tori wi pe wa conversant pelu lubricant oni o je ke mo we talked about spermicide ninu awon lubricant yen ala awon kan to se wi pe o ma npa to okunrin ni awon yen ni won pe ni spermicide from the word sperm and side side is killing sperm is sperm so awon nkan to ma npa to okunrin ni won pe ni spermicide but as, at the same time we have some lubricants that are neutral and why do we advise people uh, infertile couples to make use of lubricants we still advise some of them to make use of lubricants that is the neutral ones it helps in motility sperm motility ti awon atonye ti won ba le sare dada bo se ye ti won ba lo awon lubricants yen awon nkan to ma mu ki atonye ko tete sare won le so wi pe ki won lo so it will help it will assist the motility of the sperm to go to get to the uterus especially when the woman is ovulating then another thing tia sonny no infertility only be a shele ka calendar wa be a shele ka time si obini ma ovulate because any sexual intercourse that does not take place during the ovulation period will be unfruitful so ele to ma shi she gan gan o nini ba ti obini ba ovulate mi mo yoba ti ma fi shalaye ovulation ye then you talked about art assisted reproductive uh, technologies we have various types of uh, art but a little common you can we on schedule see only ivf before the advent of ivf we have some other methods like flushing the tubes we call it hydrotubation and new motivation see what about this cover we put tube over in yellow block new fire bar key fertilizer of uncle called just in you trust it one shaking in one bar one bar flush it lati open then we have some of them that we call follicular tracking one of our tracking that's here in here to my macho to my macho when you pull up or only she pull up or she actually walk holy shiri she i want to come in here lower then we have another one that we call iui intrauterine insemination 
my brother Mola ti shalaye e ibe yen na won ma assist obirin ati okunrin yen ni won gba spam okunrin won gba egi obirin won ba won fertilize kan to transfer e si inu obirin yen lati gbe i to pari e o ni won ti shalaye fun wa yen surrogacy is a form of assisted uh, reproductive therapy too ta ba ri wi pe obirin yen lo ni problem boya ye apoli omo e ko le gbe omo won gba eyin obirin yen won gba spam okunrin yen won ba won fertilize won wa wa obirin mi ta re pe ti won ma transfer sinu ile omo ti eun lo ma ba won gbe omo yen si to ma fi dagba obirin mi o le ja buro yawo o le je gbon yawo o le ja buro oko in fact o le je ya yawo tabi ya oko anybody to ba wa willing lati ba won se lo ma ba won se nna tan ba de ti ba won se tan ti won ba gbe omo yen ba gbe omo yen fun adura ti olorun a ran lowo loruko jesu mommy alex so broke over to you Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. I shake on my shake on sir. I can see still I can still see two hands raised, but we are very sorry. Our time is fast spent. So please, if you still have any question, you can always chat and any of us privately. We are going to help as much as we can. We are very, very sorry because of our 